Sometimes you have to work with legacy systems and their types often look like this. Now, what you then do is you create your own types and map the legacy types into your own type system. But you have to keep track of all these types manually and if something changes in the legacy system, you also have to update all your types manually yourself. So stop doing this and let TypeScript do the heavy lifting using the deep replace. So let's fix some of these legacy types. So let's first see what we are working with here. We have this legacy system API type, which at first has three names. It has always a prefix with legacy and then the name and the suffix, which is just the version. So version one, version two, or version three. So for our API, we of course don't want to have these three versions. We only want to have one, we want to have the name, which is a string. Now, the second one we can see is interesting. This is called Tim stamp, and they added a new one, which is called new timestamp. So this means, well, maybe they did a typo, but they could not change it because the consumers were still using this element with a typo. So of course we don't want Tim stamp and timestamp. We only want timestamp in there. Now the third one, as we can see, is a user object, which looks like this, and it has a UUID in there in two versions. And the funny part is we can see here, even after UUID, it has an underscore. So we also want to fix this, but we don't want to call this UUID. We only want to call this ID because we don't want to restrict us to only be allowed to use UUIDs. So you have an ID here, which is either a string or a number, because we can see here they changed it from number to string. And the last one here is the first name. We say first name, which is just a string. Now, of course, as we can see, we could now use this and this would be fine. But as soon as this legacy system API here changes something and it publishes the new types, then there is no way for us to see that there has something changed. So we don't get a compile time error if we create this manually. So let's not create this manually, but let's create this in a more generic way. For that, we need a search and replace type. So let's start easy and let's say we have to search and replace type. We pass it in our type and we say we have a from we want to pass in, which is a string and a to, which is also a string. Now, how do we want to implement this replacement? Now, I already did a video about template literals and also did a video about infer. You can find it in the info box and in the description below. But what we will do here is we say if this t extends and we use template literals here. So we say if this t is in the form of a string, but not any string, but we say if this string has any before here, and basically this can be any string, but also an empty string. And then it's followed by this from we are looking for, and it has anything after it. In this case, we'll do something. So it's important to understand that this before here can, as already mentioned, be also an empty string, but we are looking for if this from is anywhere in this string we pass in. So in this case, what we do is we just use this before we found, and then we replace this from with this to we passed in here as a type. And at the end, we pass in after like this. And if this is not the case, so if this T is not in the shape or if it's not even a string, we just return T itself. So let's now check if this is working. So we say search and replace and let's pass in here legacy name v1. And then we say here we want to replace legacy underscore with nothing like this. And now let's see if this works. And as we can see, it does. It replaces this legacy underscore here with nothing because we said, okay, search for this element, for this part in the type and replace it with this empty type. And we can see this is working perfectly fine. Now, the only restriction we have here is that we cannot use it to replace multiple elements. So we have here, if we have a legacy underscore twice, we can see that it only replaces the first element because here it only finds the first one and returns the rest then immediately because it only replaces like one instance of it. But we can fix this. We can say here, okay, if you find something like this, if you find something which is in this shape, we will do the replacement here, but we will just do the search and replace call again. So we say search and replace again, but we pass it in our replace string here and just pass it our from and our two here in again. And now we can see we fixed it. Now we can add in as many legacy underscore strings as we want, because as you can see here, I can add as many as I want and it will remove all of them. So now we have this search and replace, which takes a from and a to string and replaces all occurrences. Now, 
The only problem with this is that we are not able to add more things to search for. So we don't have like multiple from two pairs so that we also can say we want to replace this v1 with nothing in this case. So we have to do this later. But before we do this, let me show you something really cool. We can say here, instead of using fixed strings, we can use template literals and we can say, hey, if there is a v followed by any number, then remove it. So we don't have to specify v1, v2 or v3. We can just pass in anything we want here. We can just pass in the v followed by any number. So if you, for example, change this to three, this will also be replaced. Really cool. But now let's do this more generic that we can add more from two pairs. So what we say here is we have the type here from two and we say we have a from which is a string and a two which is a string. Now let's create here a new type and let's call this type search and replace all. Now it still uses this TV pass in, but instead of a single from two, we now pass it in a from two array like this. And we say this has to be of type from two array. And now what we can do is we can loop over this from two array and use this array to replace all the occurrences we define in there. I already did a video about recursion. I will show it in the info box, but also in the description below. But basically what we do here is we do some really fancy stuff here. We will say, okay, if this from two array still has an element in there, we will take the first element, do the replacement and then call our function again with the remaining elements. So we say here from to array extends. And now we say if it is an array, which has a from property in the first element in the array, infer this from here. And we know this has to be a string and the two here infer two, which also needs to be a string. And the remaining part, we are not interested in currently. So what we do is we say here, we spread our remaining elements of this array in a variable, let's call this remaining like this. And we say this is of type from to array. So maybe this looks a little bit strange, but what we really just do here is we check if this from to array has an element in there at the first position. If so, we will infer the from and to type because we will use it to do the search and replace and we'll save the remaining elements in this remaining type here. And if this is found, so if this is working, we just call search and replace with our T, with our type we pass in, with the from and with the to like this. Now, if there are no more elements in the from to array, so if this shape here is not correct, then in this case, we just return T itself. Now you can see maybe that there is an issue here because we don't call search and replace all again. So this will currently only use the first element in our array, then do the replacement with it and then return the string we passed in. So it will not do it for every element in the array. So what we have of course to do is we have to recursively call our search and replace. So we will call search and replace all again, pass it the result of our search and replace and pass it the remaining elements of our from to array. So maybe this is a little bit hard to understand at first, but let's do a simple example. Let's say we have a type here and let's call this type replacements. Now this is an array which has from, and now we want to do this from two pairs. Now what we will do first is, first we will say we have the legacy underscore. This we will replace with nothing because we will re basically strip this away. The second one is we also want to remove everything which has new in front of it with nothing. The third one we want to do is we want to replace using template literals, everything which has a version in front of it, a V followed by a number with nothing. And what we also want to do is we want to replace this error we had in the timestamp. So this Tim stamp with timestamp like this. And we also want to fix our UUID. So we have our UUID underscore. We want to replace with ID. And we also want to replace the simple UUID with ID. Let's do a simple check here. We now can say we have our search and replace all. And let's pass in here legacy name v1. And as a value, we pass in replacements. Now let's check what the result here is. 
And we could see now we only get name back because what happens here? We pass in our string and our replacements. We then go in here and say, okay, this T here is our legacy name V1 when we start with. We will then check, has this from to array an element at the first position? Yes, it has. So we pass this from and to we infer here to our search and replace. So the first result string will then be name V1. So we pass it again into our search and replace all, which is name V1. So because we have removed the first element here, we will work with the remaining part here and it doesn't find anything for new so we're still working with name v1 but the next one it finds something with a v and a number so it replaces it with nothing and so it does go on and on as long as it finds more elements in it but as soon as the array is empty it will just return the type itself and basically what this means is it will return the cleaned string now this works fine so we can also do this with new Tim stamp we want like this. We can see this returns only a timestamp. Now, but what is missing is that we want to be able to pass in a whole object, not only single strings. And we can do this really easy using mapped types. So let's create a simple new type and let's call this type deep replace. We pass it in our T again and our from to array, which has to be of type from to, basically the same which we used with search and replace all. And now what we can do is we can use map types. As already mentioned, I already did a video about this. You can find it in the info box and in the description below. What we now will do is we will loop over our properties of our object we pass in. So we say key in key of T and we will loop over all the property names basically. And we will then say, hey, we use a search and replace all on our key. And the second parameter here is this from two array we will use to replace it. Now, important is that I call this deep replace because we don't do this on the most outer part of our object. What we need to do here is when we find a property here, we have to call into this type again because you also want to replace this UUID in here. If we would not call this here recursively into our object, then we would only replace the most outer elements, but everything in there would stay untouched. So we have to call this here again. We say deep replace and we then call it with the inner type here. So with the T key here and the value of course is still from two array. Now this is already it. What we did is we looped over all our properties of our object and then we will also loop over all inner objects and we will then for each of the keys we find replace it using the search and replace with this from two pairs we passed in. So let's check if this is working. We have our API here and we say deep replace and we say legacy system API replacements like this. And now let's create an object, our API of type our API like this. And now let's see what we have to add here. We have our user, okay, we say here user like this, and this has to be an object which needs a first name, which is my name, let's say, and we also need an ID like this. Now we also need to add a name in there, and let's say here our API, and we of course also need to add a proper timestamp here. And we can say here this is one, two, three like this. And we can see now that this compiles fine. Now let's take this and put this beside our legacy system API to see a little bit better what we achieved here. We can see here that we had this legacy system API, which had all these versions, this legacy prefix and so on. And we made this much more concise. And the cool part about this is that if there is something added, for example, if there is now a name v4 added to it, then nothing really changed because our type stays the same. But if there is, for example, a legacy first name, we can see that our API now fails because now what we have to do is we have to also have our first name here at the top level and we can see that it also gets clean. So we don't have to do this manually and I hope you understand now what I mean with this generic approach to make our types much better and much easier to maintain. And I really like this to be able to take these legacy types and create really easy new types from it, which then can be worked with easy without having to maintain them manually, but just let TypeScript do the heavy lifting for us. So thank you for watching the video. I hope you learned something useful today. If you did, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to see a certain topic covered in a future video, just let me know in the comments. See you soon in the next video. Bye.